Hit word. Now, I saw an Underlord earlier today, and uh, it was not exactly the greatest Underlord game for Tib in that matchup. He did the best that he could, obviously, but wasn't really able to have maybe as big of an impact as, uh, as he had been hoping for. Well, at least in theory, we know what teams want from this pick, right? So if they can pull it off here, if, if Devi is able to find the farm and the opportunities then the Underlord is certainly going to be a potential sort of pivot point for their team fight. If they can just... Yeah, and I think it's pretty easy versus the Sand King as well to just be like, whoop, you're going to Burrow Strike in, you're in. You're stuck, you're most likely going to die. It's not really the prettiest thing. And, well, the Pit War doesn't give you that much lockdown, but shore it up with another Faceless Void. We didn't get to see too much of the last Faceless Void Yamsun played. He really just kind of had the game laid out before him. Didn't need to do all too much there. Hopefully he'll be pushed a little bit more to his brink here. Get some crazy chronos going for us. Uh, it's a really nice pick, especially with the Keeper of the Light. It actually makes those really uh, heavily channeled Illuminates actually do damage. Feels like a 500 damage nuke spell. It's really just not something you want to deal with if you're infamous. And infamous right now don't really have a way to replenish themselves. They don't have any healers. They are really kind of banking on how good their initiation is. I feel like in their next pick here would love if they somehow, I don't know, perhaps picked maybe the Ember Spirit for it alone, because they do need another person to jump. They need someone else to go in. I think they would love a Spirit to pair with that Ink Spell, even though this does shove that Tiny more or less likely into that safe lane position. Oh. That's an Anti-Mage. Okay. Okay. So, got a potential answer to Storm, right? The Storm Spirit can be hit up. Even, see, the Coddle. Uh, could make for an interesting Mana Void target as well. It's a hero that's going to be able to match the same kind of farming style as your Faceless Void. And uh, I could also see Infamous maybe just running the AM Grimstroke lane here early on. And that does still give you a little bit of that threat uh, of the Inkswell stun too. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if this Antimage is going to work. I, I'm so scared whenever we see it picked up. And of course... The bomb presents itself, right? There's a Storm Spirit, there's a Keeper of the Light. Those are your targets, those are your easy kills. But you are playing versus a Pit Lord. You are playing versus that natural root, and you are playing versus a Chronosphere, where if Yemson can never find you, he is going to be more than happy to just use his Chronosphere to take you out. As I think... Somebody paused, paused with console? Yeah. Somebody paused with console for a second there on the Bane Band, which is... Okay. No idea how to, or if we can even check that. I feel like... Uh, my console's clear, so maybe I missed it. Um, it was alone. Says he was in the menu and it paused anyway. Sting. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Who cares? You know, you'll move on from that. That was it. Was only paused for like a second, right? Yeah, Who that's cares? true. But um, at the same time, I do agree with Wildcard though. It does feel like Infamous need a support right now? They're definitely a little bit heavy stacked. It's just unfortunate that this isn't going to be a park or tiny. I feel like now they are losing a little bit of agency. This does mean that you are going to have that tiny Grimstroke combo coming in a little bit sooner. You're going to get that Blink Dagger Rush coming in from alone. He's certainly going to be effective. I just hope everything kind of syncs up, though. I, I, in fact, almost wish that they put the Sand King mid versus the Storm and then send that tiny to the three position because I feel like tiny Grimstroke just syncing those heroes up as soon as possible is going to be just that much more important. Or at the same time, uh, wild card need their five they need their sammy boy hero i believe here so it's a little bit funny they've got their last pick five position for sammy boy uh, you know you pick your hero first pick overall twice in a row i guess i guess he kind of deserves it right yeah you know turnabout's fair play is oh god never mind no there's 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 no sympathy here you're gonna go for a fifth pick viper for sammy that's just straight up gross no sympathy whatsoever now if you're infamous well, no matter what, that lane that the Viper is sort of going into is going to suck for you to deal with. So, as you said earlier, you were sort of hoping they move the Sand King mid. I suppose, technically speaking, they could still do that. They're probably not going to, but now what do you look for? What kind of hero is going to match up against the Storm, be okay inside of a Chrono, or have the ability to dodge it, but also not get caught out by someone like a Viper with all of that damage coming from him? Well, it's just... Feels like you're not going to be able to tick every box that Infamous will need it to. 
Yeah, it certainly is a tall ask. I mean, I, I'm really trying to think of heroes here. Uh, thinking back, you know, with the Viper picked up, you'd love someone who could maybe get on top of said Viper, push him around. I'm uh, thinking uh, four position wise, heroes like the Earth Spirit or the Tusk seem semi interesting, but then you're still playing versus a Pit Ward and the Root's really annoying. So that's kind of out the window. I don't feel like Infamous want to pick their five here because that's just kind of ugly last overall picking your five with last pick in your draft uh, it just does not feel nice and that mm. is an option that's a stable choice i feel like we are going to probably see michael on that hoodwink and then see a on the grim stroke probably feels the best but hold up uh, oh sammy boy storm spirit let's <laughs> go let's go and that's going to be viper versus tiny in the mid lane Okay. Uh, uh, my it's fun. It's fun. Rain is failing. That is that is very funky. So yeah, we'll see Sammy Boy on I mean I assume he's taking the storm and he's gonna play it as a support here, not that he and Esk are just switching positions at this point. Yeah, and well before I felt bad for Oscar. Now I don't. Oscar's gonna have a blast. He's playing first as Storm. Storm, Faceless Void as a, as a Sand King with drills for hands. I mean, I think Oscar's going to have a, a grand old time as this SK now. And that also, I want to say, weakens your line up quite a bit if you're wild card. Maybe they make it work because they have the Keeper of the Light. You do not need net worth on that hero. Maybe that's the kind of gamble pick here, but I, this is kind of random, I feel like. But they certainly should do quite well in their lanes here, especially Esk. Going to need to see him absolutely work alone here, and I certainly think he can. Yeah, now you you need to justify this switch up with a fantastic performance. If Esk just bullies on the Viper, then, you know, we overlooked this. It was a it was a neat little footnote that they switched it up like that. If it doesn't work out, then now we're going to be basically second-guessing every single decision that they make in this game. So, see how it goes, I suppose... If you're Sammy, you won't have the same amount of farm, but we know what the storm can do with, I mean, brown boots and three null talismans. That's not a crazy amount of gold to pick up. Obviously, the timing will then shift, but you could still get a, a pretty close consistency with Sammy uh, compared to what you get from this mid hero, at least for a little while. Yeah, it's still a little bit clowny you know <laughs> we'll see <laughs> but it's uh yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what actually uh, happens here as i think uh yeah faceless void is not the target level one we don't hit it with the bushwhack everybody's gonna walk away alone does not really want to be forced into getting tossed level one he is playing versus a viper probably just gonna get that tree grab and then hope that he can push in the wave as much as he can because it is a pretty bad lane you are laning versus a viper it's certainly obnoxious really the only thing you have going for you if you are alone is getting that toss on the range creep underneath tower and kind of hoping for the best here but uh, i could certainly see alone really starting to struggle here and maybe you know uh, let's say sambo wanted to play phases void Esk wanted to play viper you know everybody wanted to try something different this game yeah, and well if you're wild card, you're sitting at. Yeah, so it's gonna get a little bit there. You're sitting at something like nine and three at this point in your schedule. So, eh, if there was ever a time where you would maybe be willing to roll the dice like that, this is the scenario. But see what happens. Oscar's gonna get in with the burrow, and Sammy is gonna take a lot of damage here. Bushwhack's coming back up in one second as well, so he needs to avoid the tree. Will not do so. Oscar doesn't have Burrow, though, for quite some time, so it can't go any further than that. But that's a fair bit of health burned away. It's a nice bit of the Storm's mana, and I just want to know how exactly you play position 5 Storm Spirit. It looks like he's going to just try to be aggressive with the Remnants, but, I mean, Infamous aren't just going to let you walk up and say, Hey, can I put a Remnant in your face? Please don't move until it goes off. Yeah, and that's why, you know... Turn back the clock, TI-8, Serenity, jin -Q playing the offlane Storm Spirit. He had to deal with those same troubles, where it is that much of a detriment to yourself. Or walking up to these waves when you don't have a high ground on either side is very difficult. And I think, really, uh, the only thing to say here is that Oscar is going to have a very free lane, is what's going to come of this. Not be a whole lot that can be done to the Sand King right now, so... 
should be just fine for himself. We'll see, ooh, see if they can get any aggression going as Michael kind of missing on the bushwhack there. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're Oscar, you might sort of pump the brakes on going after these kills just because of how much farm you're potentially going to be able to find in this lane as well as uh, middle lane. What is going down here alone? That's a very deep dive and he's got the kill. He's going to die to the tower. No, he's not. 15 HP. Ooh, 15 HP in a dream as alone gets first blood going and... Oh, we said Esk sort of needed to bully a little bit here. He's the one who gets beat on that first go around. Yep, that's not supposed to happen. That's, that's <laughs> not a thing, but I think that's where hopefully a wild card uh, don't uh, lose off of just them kind of playing a little bit too slow here. And I mean... This is not a position you really want to be in. I, I think Esk got greedy for his bottle. He gets the buy and then almost gets it picked up in the fountain as Devai so close to the trades here. And I think A might actually die. Oh, boy. Okay. Fairy fire. He's now, no, yeah, he's, he's got to dodge yeah. that. But now he's trapped by the creeps and he's still dead. You get to pick how you want to die, but don't get to survive. I know that's kind of rough there, and of course, you know, you do a lot of damage, you get some nice mana burn, but as is the problem usually when you are hitting versus these offlaners that simply don't care. You see the Violam has got about 20 base damage on top of Parker, and once you do burn all of that mana, you're not exactly doing all too much more damage to said offlaner either, so it doesn't really end up mattering for the Pit Lord, and now he's the one who just kind of gets to kind of chill in the wave with his Bracer and regens to full. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna say it's down in the bottom lane. Sammy is gonna get jumped in on there. Michael hits with the bushwhack. Oscar with two points up in the burrow has a little bit more damage to work with as well. So we'll get the hit on that storm. And now Michael's drifting towards mid. He's got a full stick here. So be able to solve this mana issue in just a moment. If there's actually an opportunity though, because Esk is moving away alone. It's for the avalanche into the toss. They don't get the toss back though. So Esk is... Actually, potentially in a worse position here is, yeah, if he gets tossed back, he's closer to his own tower. Instead, he's stuck in the middle of the river. S goes down alone, is unfortunately going to die in exchange as Alexo and Sammy come over to clean that up. But that's the Viper who goes down first. So Infamous will get a little bit better on the trade because of it. Yeah, it's not the worst case scenario in addition to that. Your Viper is going to get to take uh, three range creeps underneath his tower, gets to catch up on levels, and once S hits level five, that really is where the Tiny no longer gets to play uh, normally, I guess you could say. That's where he's really going to rely more on his stacks and his farming. And he certainly, even though he's keeping up last hits-wise, he's starting to steadily fall behind, and Alone has certainly been buying more regen than Esk has, mainly because Esk has been dead, but... Oscar, man, that's... Esk not. He's, gonna, he's just going to die here, actually, yeah. He was in the 1v1 as middle lane, yeah, as you said. Whoops, broke the camera. Esk gets taken down mid. So that turns into a trade-off, but... Both sides looking for some early fights. Oscar was in a 1v1 there against the Faceless Void for quite some time. Thought he could win it, but... Uh, Sammy comes over, he drops down a sentry, and gets to the electric vortex, so... Your Sand King loses, but you get a kill onto the Viper on the other side of the map, so... Overall, Infamous should still be okay with that, but now Oscar, Oscar, this is the same place you died. Still a sentry there, so he's got to be very careful about this. Sammy's trying to get into position. And it's going to be the Vortex again. The Dilation comes through. He'll Burrow Strike defensively, and, and Yamsun get a bash here. Without it, I don't think they can really find the kill. They do get the bash as well as the slow from the Overload, but Michael arrives in time to help out. Acorn Shot comes through. They're going to drop down the Bushwhack, and Oscar just needs... Well, he needs a several more seconds, actually, to get off that Burrow Strike, but instead, well, Michael's able to get in there and do the damage. Sammy gets taken down, Yamsun backs away, and these two squads, at least in the bottom lane, are really not shying away from any early fighting. They just keep on going at each other. Yeah, and I think that's where, at the end of the day, Michael's really the big winner. He's been involved in so many kills early on here. He's level 4, despite what feels like never spending too much time in a lane by himself. Don't really know what you do at this point as the Tiny... I, alone is just playing like four tiny right now. He has spent so little time in the mid lane. He's either been killing Esk or kind of walking around here. He spent about a minute before that kill happens on the Vi, just smoked up, getting XP in the mid lane. I guess you're level six tiny, just ready to make plays on the map. But 
it's still very strange to see as the Sammy boy trying to get a soul kill onto A here, but needs one more hit, should get it. But Easy's super dead. Yeah, Alone's coming back in looking for even more kills. Sammy gets taken down. They're onto the coddle as well. Michael's <laughs> even going to get in here. What are lanes? Who needs lanes? Let's just kill is basically the mantra of Infamous right now. And it's gotten him eight kills in just under seven minutes. So it's working out pretty well. Yeah, who needs to lane when you're going to lose your lane if you stand in it? You know, you might as well just do this, I guess. It's not just that. You get the, the lane over to A, you have a hero who's already got two points up in the Stroke of Fate, so he's going to be able to get the range creep and uh, ideally one more CS. So I, I this is such a weird game. Uh, looking over at Alone as well, who's only a 1,000 away from his Blank Dagger, I, it really is just a four tiny just in your mid lane. He just started there. You know, he's a traveler. Five and one for alone. This is the exact start that you hope to get with the tiny, and now here he goes. I mean, there just there is no middle lane for tiny. He just refuses to accept it. Instead, he's looking for this kill. And Yamsun, uh, I don't think they had vision. This is just some good instinct from him as he backs away. But he backs away into Michael. So now he's got to sit underneath his tower, and you're not going to get ganked, I suppose. But you're also not doing a lot of farming at the moment. So yeah, going down a little, mid. A little, little bit of time wasted, but yeah, A is dead. Okay. S can Sammy do uh, make the move onto him, and that is going to prompt Michael to start moving back towards that middle lane. Run right into Sammy here as well, but Toadwink really doesn't oh. have doesn't really have any damage at the moment. As top lane, they're looking for the tower. Middle lane, they're looking for the fight. S gets hot. Parker, Parker actually doesn't get the kill. The Mana Void wasn't enough. Michael's the one to sort of snag it, so it's a 3-0 start for your Hoodwink now. Sammy is finally going to try to bring an end oh. to this rain, but Michael's just buying time. Alone's the one coming in. There's the Avalanche. I don't understand really everything that we're seeing here, E.T., but it's working for Infamous, so they're not going to stop. Yeah, it, it stroke of luck from Parker. He TPs out of the top lane as soon as Yamsen goes for the Chrono. So the Chrono whiffs, they lose out on that. Alone continues to get these kills by just staying in the trees. Kills on the Viper as well. Uh, fortunately, that is going to be kited out by that Illusion Rune. And does he get the Vortex on Sammy? Not in time. Might get A. Doesn't have his TP. He's uh, much less lucky. But all these heroes just to kill a little old Grimstroke. He'll take it, but... This is still uh, not the position I don't think they expected themselves to be in. At least they find a kill. That's going to count for something, I suppose. But A has been very much playing the part of the sacrificial lamb here. He's 0 and 1. He's, or excuse me, 0 and 4. He's only got the one assist. But look at what his sacrifice has enabled 3 0 and 4 for Michael. You've got Alone, who is sitting on six kills, just as many as Wildcard have as a team 10 minutes in. So. Looking pretty good, and if he can find one more kill, that's the Blink Dagger secured, so they're going to go looking for it. Parker blinking forward. Devai is going to get hit up here. He pick pulled himself, but it was Yamsun that Michael tried to get with the Bushwhack, but that's a little too split and actually bring the cores far enough forward to do any damage. Yeah, and Wildcard start to pull ahead a little bit. They took a nice triple stack in the large camp there. At the same time, though, Oscar has his nine minute blink dagger coming out right now. He's incredibly farmed. Of course, didn't really end up laning versus too many heroes there, but that's where this ward, if they're paying attention, is going to see Oscar on the low ground here, and it's going to be immediately scouted out as a huge team fight and a huge mana void doing so much damage. Sharpshooter? No Ooh. spells, though. Not going to be able to find that kill, but they did get a nice stun onto Sammy as Oscar will reveal that blink dagger. Jumps in. Sammy dead. Esk is oh, Esk. in some trouble. <laughs> Avalanche into the toss. S has to hold his ground. Bushwhack's going to lock him down, though, and... Yep. Another kill for Alone. 7-1 and one now, and... Fortunately, yeah, the Creepwave did suffer a pretty substantial amount of damage, so they can't turn that into a push onto the Tier 1, but at this point, if you get that many kills, you, you are still very much the winner of that fight. Yeah, and... That was without Oscar really needing to do anything. He was just kind of very casually walking to the fight. I think he threw out one blink burrow, but other than that, he has not really had to care too, all too much as the Sand King. But I think that's also where Wildcard, Chrono's up. 
the Emps and we'll be able to re react to another crazy dive like that on the mid lane. I mean, can you imagine five heroes stacked up like they were before jumping into that Faceless Void? Uh, maybe something can happen here. I just hope uh, it happens soon for Wildcard because Infamous are really hitting their stride here with two Blink Daggers up on their heroes. The, the kill squad is going to start running around the map and it's something that I think Wildcard need to be incredibly scared of. They need to try and regain some sense of momentum at this point and the chronosphere is only going to be able to win you one fight but it's, it might just take the one fight and as you said they were grouped up around the tower even without the chrono there was a point where the viper had nether toxin down on four separate heroes before he got dove so if you can do that with the chronosphere to get the full duration then these heroes are not going to last very long we'll see if they can pull that off because infamous are still the ones on the hunt for man smoke into this west side jungle if they could find yamsun that would be the big one but i'm gonna get the vision on him just yet and oh hold on. they're really gonna push for this one now you're starting to get in dangerous territory though but they will still make the move jumping in onto yamsun they hit him up with the avalanche into the toss into the sharpshooter they've got the kill yamsun's dead sammy silenced up dropping low tries to zip away actually zips onto a instead so they will find a kill not really worth the loss of their carry just yet but they are looking for a little bit more as michael is a try to run self through the trees here comes oscar though blinking his way forward with the epicenter Divai lama is going to get hit up and then alone makes his move waiting to see if anyone was going to sort of immediately come in to help when he sees there's no one there he's able to find the kill but he now needs to actually get away cleanly alexo's doing a lot of damage to him so tiny's going to try to make his escape the illuminate is not going to connect he just needs time for that blink dagger but with the Sun coming in I'm sure he oh, gets no. away oh he blinks Oh, like that's so, so unfortunate. He was doing such a good job of keeping the right clicks on him to cancel it, but he wasn't able to do so long enough. He doesn't buy enough time for Yamsun. He doesn't get to rotate over. It doesn't get what should be a free kill into him just farming as the Discord disconnects. That's so sad. But <laughs> at the same time, uh, I think it's incredibly important for Infamous to actually finish off those kills that they have been starting. We saw there for a second, whenever they split their damage a little bit, I think maybe if uh, they were just ready for that Faceless Void to die a little bit faster, Oscar gets the safest stun, they probably clean up Sammy Boy all the same. But if they don't find those kills, that's where the Illuminate, that's where the Spirit Form coming in from Alexo is very obnoxious. That heal just makes it almost impossible to fight. And if they do botch their initiation, as we usually talk about with Tiny and Sand King, once you're in, you don't really have a good way out. It's where they very easily, I think, could have gotten much hard punished there. Bit a good fortune there that they were able to avoid those significant consequences. In the meantime, Parker, um, well, he's going for a Lincoln Sphere as his first item. I thought for a moment he was maybe thinking Battle Fury as A. Uh, gonna get himself picked up there in the middle lane. Oscar now in trouble as well. They'll pull him in with a Vortex. Parker, though, drops down that Mana Void and... Well, it kills Devi, but it doesn't save Oscar as <laughs> Devi pinging out the damage he took. It's, uh, that's always a fun one, but that's still a two for one. If you're wild card, you're going to be happy with that. You find those kills. Chronosphere had to be used, but that's what it's there for at this point in the game. Yeah, I'm also like standing over here looking at Parker's item build. Okay, he swapped right. it. He had a link it's queued oh, up for okay. so long there. I, I was excited, you know, I thought maybe, 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 because it is a very slow battle fury, but at the same time, he hasn't died at all. He's gotten involved in a few kills here and there, but he really has been giving a lot up a lot of that map to Oscar, who has done very much with his Blake Dagger, but probably another smoke from Infamous here. It's about to be nighttime. They have this beautiful deep ward that will be fading away, but they find their way onto that Faceless Void. It'd be perfect. The scan though, is even more perfect. You know Sammy wants to put a, a nice little high ground ward there. It's going to get very scary, though. Okay. That is a problem. Devai is going to drop down. Not taken out just yet, as Oscar's actually the first to fall. Devai does eventually die, but this fight is really not what they wanted, and they're going to start losing some people. Michael's going to get taken down. A is dropped as well. As can Sammy able to split those kills alone. He was not really in any danger. He got out while he still had the chance, but... Just get a little bit played there, and Wildcard did a good job. They scanned out their opponents, but did not sort of give away that they had that knowledge. 
Yeah, it really is one of those situations where I legitimately think Infamous need to start finding this Coddle. If they can't just Alexo do whatever he wants, that's why Divide takes so long to not even die. He just gets to live through pretty much everything. He's got the crown build. Once he gets an Atos, he's going to be even more obnoxious on that pit ward. But uh, to that same point, you cannot let the spirit form heal up these targets. You have to really strike and strike while it's hot. And that's their play that they kind of messed up before the Chrono was back up as Sammy Boy trying for A. Able to get this kill at this point, but that's geez, that's a long TP from alone, actually. So, uh, maybe with the blink, he could get in there for some revenge, but it takes a little bit too long. He could still find Alexo here, but not looking in the right direction, doesn't have vision. Nope, not at all. And really, with those two team fights not really going Infamous's way, the buildups are starting to get a little bit awkward. Alone, who of course was not spending a lot of time in those lanes, has an Oblivion staff. He's looking for that Echo Saber, but no treads, no wand. You really are feeling pretty bare bones. At the same time, Oscar also feels very bare bones. He's looking for the boots of travel. He'll probably have them sent out to him right now. But we are coming at Infamous's, I think, lowest point after their big power spike with getting their Blink Daggers, you know, five minutes ago. Because right now, they don't really have any of those supplemental items with how much they did rush those choices. Same time, though, all space for Parker, right? Got his Battle Fury, has a thousand gold on top of it. He is certainly starting to farm incredibly quickly. But Sammy, the Fiend's Gate again. Lone, though, has the Invis runes. This is not really an easy play for them. And Alone gets the time to blink away. So, Vodcard really can't do anything more here. They can't push the tower. They can't find any other kills. And that's a nice play. From alone to get himself out of trouble, but now you need to see Infamous reclaim the initiative right now, right? As you were just pointing out, you went for these sort of early blink daggers. It leaves you a little bit naked in terms of the rest of your build, so you have to keep the aggression going. And okay, there's some nice aggression. Right onto Sammy Boy mid, they're going to be able to find that kill, and fortunately, they still can't get great damage onto the tier one. That's still just going to be a target that eludes them, but. Find these kills, put your opponents on the back foot, stop them from farming while Parker continues to build up, and make these sort of early reaches for these items actually pay off for. Yeah, it's also where Alexa is just so annoying. Their wave clear is so great. The Nether Toxin, the Firestorm, the Illuminate, it's just miserable. It's where Infamous are certainly taking the farming route when it comes to finishing off a lot of these items, and I think... I've got to say, Parker is the most farmed anti-mage I think we've seen at the tournament so far. He's about to pick up a Yasha 18 minutes in. He is certainly topping the charts right now. And I think that's also where Wildcard should start feeling a little bit of the pressure here. I think that's where they would love to set up another kill. They'd love to take out the Tiny. But I think more so, if they could set up anything with this Cronus here onto the anti-mage, give him a little bit more time. And then suddenly, you're not only missing him out in that Chronosphere for the kill, you're also going to start losing cures on the back line. Because both Alexo and Sammy Boy, once this anti-mage shows up to those fights, you are a liability. You are someone who is going to be giving this anti-mage so much more damage. It's one of the few ways I think that the pit ward can die is if he is near one of those bombs. In time alone, tried to make the most of the haste rune there. A little bit of a drive by attempt, but wasn't really able to find anything. But with the haste rune, he's just able to sort of back away, loops back around to his middle lane and really sacrifice too much there. But we come back to this point for infamous. Now is the time to maybe try and make some sort of move they're understandably a little bit hesitant because if you move anywhere close to that faceless void you're fighting into a chronosphere but i mean gamson quite literally cannot be everywhere there has to be some sort of move they can make somewhere on the map but not really seeing not really seeing them emphasize that right now, which i suppose still works out because as we've repeatedly mentioned parker is just going to keep on farming but if you're not going to go for these kills, then Alone and Oscar need to start joining the AM on that sort of farm train right now. As Alone goes in for the Avatos, not enough damage for the kill, but Oscar was able to jump in with that Epicenter. So that is enough. Sammy will go down, but the Chrono was deployed, and now Alone has to get away, but he's not going to be able to. They cancel the TP with the Root, and the Amson finds the kill. That's pretty much the only play that you could not allow to happen if you're Infamous, and now I think they're going to lose more as well as A is going to get jumped in on. Yep just lost track of where the fiend's gate was i suppose and well that's a little bit awkward for parker he's got all these heroes in front of his face as michael also tps in but 
Okay. I would have loved if Woundcard uh, could have maybe taken a peek over at Roche, and they can certainly do Roche fairly easy with the Nether Toxin from the Viper. Just isn't really able to do a whole bunch versus you, but I think that's where Wildcard are still under quite a lot of pressure here. They want to run out this mid-tier one. I think they should, and I do think they will, but how they get their way onto these objectives is going to be the next stage of this game. It's how they really start up here. And without Epi, can Infamous really do this? Uh, hmm. And it's going to look a little bit awkward. They don't get that Inkswell stun either, so they can't really do this. And Sammy who makes his move, he gets the Vortex, they pull A in, and yeah, Infamous maybe shouldn't have tried that because they get no kills and they lose one of their own. And this is kind of what I was mentioning right now. Sammy, he's got brown boots and four Null Talismans. He's still doing Storm Spirit things right now. Another you know, five to ten minutes, then you start maybe seeing him drop off a little bit, but... Wildcard at this point effectively are running with four cores. Yeah, they're kind of just chilling. And with the Coddle, he doesn't need to be worried about, you know, getting the farm and then heading back to base and then getting the reset and then just going in that Storm Spirit cycle. And you look at what he's actually holding right now. He's got a whole bunch of gold and he's looking for that Aghanim Scepter, the big team flight ability that could really be your supplement for Chrono whenever you don't have those abilities. As this Parker just get a TP out here. Sammy was skulking in the trees for such a long time, but then doesn't break the TP. It's a little bit of a missed opportunity, but one that I don't think he wanted to press for himself either. He can cancel that TP, but then Parker's angry and has a lot of damage to turn on to the Storm Spirit. So, yeah, not worth the risk because it's the decision right now. But this is going to be a lot easier for Infamous to pull off as Sammy just gets caught wandering a little bit there. They find that first kill, and Parker is still going. And he's going to try to get onto Esk, and his teammates are coming up behind him here, but the Viper's going to pop that BKB. He's holding his ground for now. Oh. Dubai, meanwhile... Oh, God, never mind. He's not holding his ground at all. He tries to TP out, and Alone comes in with the physical damage to actually get the kill, so they find Esk. Michael gets traded out, but they're okay with that, especially if it leads into another fight. They've got Dubai Lama stunned up underneath the Tier 1 tower. Oscar goes in with the Epi. No, he doesn't. He gets pushed back by Alexo instead. And you're able to get Dubai Lama out of there. Um... Alexa got hit by the Avatos combo from Alone, but it wasn't enough actual damage to bring him down. And now Alone's too far forward. All of his teammates have backed off. They're going to turn around as wild cards start respawning. And I do not agree with that play, because even if you get the kill quickly, that's a kill onto the Coddle, and you didn't have any way to get yourself back out. Yeah, it's certainly a big loss, and I really do feel like Alone has become kind of that punching bag in the game until it gets a BKB doesn't really have any options when it comes to actually getting out of these fights and with that mid-tier one going down finally losing wild card at least maybe poke their heads into the pit but with this could be on Yemson, maybe they look for a smoke beforehand but there really should be no fear they should really be the ones aggressing very hard right now because there really isn't anything for infamous to do and not to mention they don't have epi yet again so really a smoke into a blind jungle would not be very risky for wild card right now Oscar does at least have the uh, the shard, so got yourself the occasional pulses out of Sand King, but it's supplemental damage. They really can't do anything with that unless he does actually have the ult to go along with it. Good news, though. Parker's still farming. Still looking pretty good here. Manta finished, working towards a Skull Basher, so Anti-Mage is very much a hero that can help turn the course of a fight really all by himself, but... We're going to need to see Parker really uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting in this fight if things continue the way they have been. Yeah, and, well, they will finally make their way into the pit as Esk kind of leads the charge, but this is not the most important Aegis in all of the game. Infamous are uh, very low cooldown. Really, this isn't going to be feeling like too much of a cost if they do end up getting the Aegis onto the Void. And I feel like it should go on the Yam Sun. Took a moment for them to figure out who was grabbing it, but yeah, it is Yamsun who will take that Aegis, two lives up on your faceless void, and Infamous, okay. Gonna look to push into this. It's not gonna be easy to get the Void Spirit or Void Spirit, the faceless void down twice, but we're gonna give it a go. They've got all their abilities back up and running outside of the sharpshooter. That's only about 12 seconds out though, so could still find this, but they're gonna wait and see what comes to them at this point i guess but right now the answer to that question is nothing nobody's really moving into that trap area just yet and divai 
Actually, kind of seems like he suspects something's going down here. Yeah, it's a little bit scary, I'm not going to lie. They've got the ward behind the tower. I feel like with the way the tiny hit is showing, the lone's trying to pretend to be scared, but until the anti mage actually shows on this tier one, uh, alone can certainly put pressure on, but it's not going to be the fastest push in the entire world. There you go. Finally takes it down. Still on their tippy toes. Do not want to give anybody initiation here. And Sammy Boy, farm back to the well, has his Aghanim Scepter, so he can see that Storm Spirit really blow open a team fight. This is something this may not know about just yet. They haven't been scouted, although now alone should see this. But the gate. Okay, they're just going to jump straight in. They're looking for the easy kill onto A first. They do manage to get him, and then they'll go right back through the gate to the north side jungle. And, well, okay. They're sticking around here on Infamous. They still have that high ground ward. They feel confident, but little do they know they're going to walk right back underneath wild card. But I think that's where so many heroes made the decision to go towards that top area that, well, this is a pretty free one. And look at that. The Poss 5 Storm Spirit gets the bottle from the Viper, takes an Arcane Rune. Uh, Sammy Boy is ready to fight. They see their target alone was hanging out mid. He actually stopped to try and farm a camp. So Sammy is going to be able to continue chasing after him. Alone does not have a BKB, not even close at this point. He still needs that final component. So he's just dead. His teammates can't reach him in time. Yeah, it's a free pick. It's easy. Uh, they do know about the Ag and Scepter at the very least, yeah, but that's where he just has infinite mana. It's just paired with the Coddle. There's nothing they can do. And looking over at bottom, Divine is trying to try anything here, and he will be able to find Michael, and I do think this is a relatively dead hoodwink. Now, Sammy Boy was over in the dire small camp is where he actually zipped from. Just, you know, keeping track of how stupid this hero still is. <laughs> yeah, 10 damage off of Overload. Uh, not really the biggest thing in the world, huh? Yeah, I don't know. They just sort of wiped their hands clean of it and said, there we go, we've balanced him, but... Oh, look, he's, he's back mid. He, he was just in the fountain a moment ago, I promise. Well, Talismans plus Storm Spear is just a too good, but... If you're infamous, you've got to try and find some way to bounce back now because they've they've lost all of their momentum. You pull up the graphs here, looks kind of ugly for them. They weren't massively ahead uh, at any point here net worth wise, but they had the momentum. They had the early blink daggers. They had their opponents in the crosshairs and just kind of let them go. Oscar and alone weren't able to find the kills. And once the uh, the kill gold stops sort of flowing in, then those early blinks don't really out as much and now very much the squad on the defensive hoping that parker is going to be enough to sort of get them back into it. and there is still that threat though parker can certainly do it here and once he has that abyssal blade then he has soul kill potential then you can't afford to just go back on a single hero the only one who can do that is divai lama as sammy boy looking for oscar and it just works solar bind is there to slow him oscar's gonna get knocked back by the blinding light and Sammy finds the kill. It, it really is a fourth core. He's even got a fifth Null Talisman, because why not? Null Talisman over Boots is actually more uh, Whoa. more efficient. Nice play from Alexo. Gets him a little bit of extra mana, so that mana void's not quite as effective. A, meanwhile, gets taken down, and uh, Parker's still going? This is not an ideal set of circumstances. And yeah, he's just going to blink away, try to TP out, but guess who's there to stop him? Yamsun drops the Chrono. And Parker is almost certainly dead here. He's rooted. His blink wasn't even back up off cooldown. They're going to throw tips over to him as well. Just try and get in his head a little bit there. And I I don't really know. You go for the mana void. It doesn't work. At that point, I think you should just really back yourself away. Instead, Parker gets kind of greedy and he's punished for it. Yep, it's taken out. It's kind of sad. Not going to lie, but well... That's going to delay for Anti-Mage a little bit more. He died so quickly whenever that Nether Tonkson was placed on top of him as well, just taking so much magic damage from that Faceless Void and the Viper combined. It's where, well, they're starting to get a little bit of net worth lead here on Wildcard. They're not really playing against opponents who want to play versus them either. Alone would still really like that BKB as the Epi onto Divai, who still has a BKB. Yep, Simple just pops not it. getting it just gonna tp away that's four heroes in the bottom lane and epicenter used and no kill maybe a kill onto alexo here yeah oscar will blink forward burrow strikes there stroke of fade in and 
They will find something, but that's not really what they wanted. They were hoping to get a quick kill onto Divide, but it's just not going their way. Yep, it's very difficult for them to find these openings. And, well, with Parker respawning, you still have that threat of the Anti-Mage just killing a hero, and he will be able to finish up his Abyssal Blade probably after he farms in that mid wave. But, uh, man, it's still not the most fun game ever. This is a pretty large power spike, though. Oh my goodness, the zip. Okay, Oscar. He's okay. They want to be more than okay. They're looking to turn this one around, but I don't know about this one. You'll get Sammy. Parker, though. Does he commit? He'll blink in. They're going to go after S. BKB activated, but he still gets bashed up by that Abyssal. And Parker is doing a pretty substantial amount of damage, but now here comes Yamsen. He doesn't have the Chrono, though, so Parker is going to be able to fall back. But falling back means he doesn't get the kill that he wanted, and Alone actually tosses Yamsen away from the fight as well. So this is just not going great for Infamous. They're trying to be aggressive, and they're not able to do it. Oscar actually might be in trouble here. Over on the other side of the fight, uses the Yule Scepter, but that means he's rooted again by that Pit of Malice. And they just can't do anything here. Dev <laughs> okay, Devi pops his gate, but he's going to get bashed up, so he's not able to get away just yet. And Parker Ooh. should be able to finish this. Yeah. So, they finally get themselves a kill onto Devi Llama, but it's going to come at a cost. A gets taken down, Michael's on the retreat, alone has basically no health, and actually has to blink back in to avoid the Illuminate, but that puts him in the middle of a fight that he can't win. He's taken down... That was an attempt at a chrono from Yamsun that gets cancelled out by the Burrow Strike, but now Infamous have to run once again and they're not going to get everyone away. Michael's picked off and it's just it's just too complicated for Infamous. It's There is no simple game plan for them, right? No, yep. They're constantly getting forced out in these super long engagements. You're playing versus a Faceless Void, who of course as long as has, he has mana, if he's got those time walks, he gets those resets. Uh, I mean, to start it all off, Divi that was his second BKB. He got two BKBs off in a single fight because of how long everything took to happen. Really, the only burst damage in this game is either coming from the Epi or the Mana Void. Everybody else has to work so long and so hard for just anything to happen. And does Parker get a kill on Alexo? He'd love that kill bottom. But it, to even all of that out, everybody kind of just dies at the end there because, again, oh my god, Sammy Boy. He's still going. He's still going. Six null talismans. Are you kidding me? I feel like he should just, he's Val, just dead. Come on. He, he just wanted to do it. He just wanted to do it. It doesn't matter. Oh, God that, is, uh, that is uh, civil service right there. Just showing you. <laughs> You're fix, a fix this, dear God. Yeah, he, he just zipped all the way to his opponent's fountain. Sure, he dies for it. But the fact that he can do it at all is just... <laughs> God, what a, what a stupid hero. My God. Uh, Sammy Boy, you, need, uh, you needed the uh, Aegis pop, you know, you had to like picture, you know, like frame perfect, a Aegis regeneration, zip from the other side of the map, you know, Abed 2016 clip. Yeah, no, we, we just do this now. Oh, you need a six nulls, man. What, I mean, what, what, what's the big deal? <laughs> Ugh. But yeah. Storm Spirit, still very, very strong. Alone, though, is going to try and force a fight here as they will push their way in. Alone pops the BKB, but BKB doesn't do you any good. He's just taking too much physical damage. He's getting bashed to hell, trying to run as best as he can here. Maybe he can blink away. It's going to get canceled, though, and he will go down. Parker now tries to make a move. Meanwhile, Sammy looking for the TP, trying to rejoin that fight. He's going to zip his way in now. Couldn't save Yamsun, but they should be able to clean this up. Michael goes down. Oscar is on the run. Their focus isn't him, though. Their focus is Parker, and yeah, they can't get the... Uh... They can't get the Anti-Mage out of there, and Oscar is going to be able to make it out okay. So there is a survivor, I suppose, but actually a second survivor, as A is able to get himself out of there as well. But the high-impact heroes are just getting picked off here. The kill onto Yamsun's nice, but it's not enough to... Yep, not enough to really matter, and with Roshi spawning, uh, well, without Yamsun... It's a little bit of a struggle, but that's where gotta love Viper. And Viper, we trust, will be able to help out Divide a little bit, even though he is certainly losing this 1v1, but that's also where the Spirit Form heal comes through, and then everything is all right. Maybe, maybe they give the uh, Aegis over to Sammy Boy, honestly, at this rate, because uh, they are taking this without their Faceless Void alive, which is a little bit peculiar, but as Ask makes room for the Aegis, I am disappointed. Ask takes the Aegis, Sammy... Actually, he's not going to be the one to take the shard. He just threw it into the Underlord's inventory as he TP'd out. So, oh. I gets a bit of an upgrade, and Infamous are starting to really run out of viable options at this point. If they lose really one or two more fights, then 
things are going to start pushing onto their side of the map. Those tier twos really feel like they're not going to last very long. And then you're only a little ways away from a high ground push and having your whole base under siege. I'm just watching Sammy boy. I'm just watching the storm spirit, waiting to see uh, where he goes next. So he could be bottom. He could be mid. He could be anywhere. If he chose, might die, but you know, that didn't stop him last time. <laughs> Good point. And he even, um, he, he has the Aghanim Scepter sort of eaten and inherent now so that he has room for that sixth Null Talisman. So this is, it's just so, it's so ridiculous that that's a thing that can be done at this point. But Oddcard aren't going to be complaining about it. They are in a very strong position right now. They just got a pressure up on your faceless void. So you've got double Chrono to work with, double BKBs as well. Uh, if Yamsen does actually get into trouble, which he hasn't in quite some time, so even in the situations where he's actually dying, his team is still trading out for him, so a lot for them to be worried about at the moment. Meanwhile, for Infamous, uh, Parker's in some trouble. Oh, he will just get chronoed. Yeah, he's able to blink away for now, but here comes that chrono. Yep, you're going to throw it down. They even have the will o there just in case, and Parker, he is not dead yet. Can he blink? No, we can't. Will-O-Wisp puts him to sleep, Sammy comes in with a Vortex, and Parker's dead, and now what is this? Alone was trying to go for a split push play, and gets some damage onto the tower, and is able to TP out, but it's really not going to be a big difference maker right now. Wild cards still know that they have the advantage, even with the Chrono down. That's what the Refresher Orb is for, and you could look to make another push here. As I said, those Tier 2 towers are not going to last long under an actual assault from Wild Card, and... Now they're going to push for the high ground. There's no buyback on that anti-mage, so... And if Yamsun wants to, pop that refresher, get a chrono onto some heroes grouped up for the defense, and it might just be enough to sort of break the door down, or Sammy could just knock on the door himself. He is going to jump his way forward. Oscar tries to come in with the epicenter, but there's that chrono. They're going to get deployed. Sand King stuck inside of it. They're going to drop A as well, and this is just... Not really a winnable fight for Infamous alone, and Michael are the only two alive, and A's the only one who has his buyback. Alone tries a tossback play, but there's no further damage, and now Alone's just going to get bashed up and dropped low. He should be dying here. There's just not a lot to be done. Alone falls, Michael dies, both of the supports buy back, but uh, they can't defend these racks, ET. They really can't do much of anything right now. Ugh. Sammy, just zipping around. You know, the, with the way Sammy Boy plays his Storm Spirit, you know, you'd really think he'd never seen the hero in his life. He's just a kid in a candy shop. Get him go. It's been a while since he's been uh, allowed to sort of play core heroes, so I guess you can understand the excitement out from him as the rest of the team uh, actually do still focus the objectives. They get the top and the middle lane of Rax while Sammy was just zipping around like a madman, and now he'll zip onto Michael looking for the kill, and it's just too easy at this point, and Infamous, I I don't know. They can wait, they can get all of their heroes back up, they can give this one last attempt, but I do mean one last attempt, because if they lose another fight, it's just done. Yeah, it really is uh, kind of at the end of this game here. I think if Infamous can find their opportunity, it's going to be a stroke of luck they need to somehow find uh sammy boy in between him getting his mana back they need to create that bomb and a bomb that will sure and certainly do a lot of damage with parker but uh, that's the only way i can honestly see them killing a faceless void with a refresher with his bkb double bkb in 60 seconds here the main problem is i don't really know how infamous survived two chronos i, I feel like yamson has just been finding his targets he doesn't even need to find his target half the time because you have the storm spirit going in like a madman and it just kind of works it's also where unfortunately for infamous this ag shard on viper just means that he's the only one on his team who really needs to do building damage he is just that much more capable of a hero and well Looking at this bottom wave with Krona coming up in five seconds. Uh, this could be the beginning of the end here, depending on who gets picked off. Let's see, is Yamsun confined? He just times out, so that's a bit of a positive. But Sammy, he's going to make the move. They've caught out Parker. This is the one hero that Infamous could not afford to lose, and he is dead with no buyback. Not still alive. Oh, that is uh, that is incorrect. But Infamous now are just sort of unable to do anything really i mean you see oscar he's he's looking to see if there's a chance but there really isn't any opportunity 
you know, one will come his way, as Sambi is going to get hit up there, but Wildcard is still looking for this fight. S is going to push his way forward. A second Chrono is going to get deployed. Alone and Oscar are caught in it, and that is GG called as Wildcard. Well, I mean, they survived, right? That was, that was all they, not all they needed to do, but that was sort of the big thing for them after they fell behind in the early stages. Weather that storm, get yourself ready for those team fights, and see the results here as they win their third straight game. Yeah. And of course, you know, we were coming in with wild card you know, on a little bit of a hot streak, feeling like they were going to do their thing, but really just feel like infamous were maybe not prepared early on. Looked cool. Looked like an infamous game. Looked like Michael and a got off to a really good start alone, doing some wonky stuff, but still finding his farm, doing his thing. But really, I think it's in both Alone and Oscar, though, that Infamous really start to fall apart, where they aren't able to steal themselves up for that mid-game. It's where Wildcard, in their item choices and their decisions, getting two very early BKBs, having this Coddle just defend that mid-tower for so long, and without Infamous finding that smoke opening, they were constantly looking for kills, but not really kills on sides of the map where they could go immediately into objectives. And I think in doing so, uh, Infamous kind of ran out of gold. They ran out of easy avenues for them to really accelerate their heroes. And then, well, Parker's the only one farming on the team. I think uh, I'm looking over at alone. I mean, as we always talk about with Tiny, got his BKB 32 minutes into the game. It's just way too slow of a pace coming out from them. And I think that's where they really started to fall apart here, where wild card, five storm, it's just that good. Coddle storm. I, I don't, I, I would rather that not be a thing moving forward here, but wild card, Made it look pretty damn impressive. So they take the opening game of the series. That's now three straight victories for them on the day. They're going to look to make it four in a row. You have one last game for them coming up. They will face off against Infamous once again, who will be hoping uh, to salvage a 1 1 split because they have another series later today as well. They are set to face off against Infinity uh, at the conclusion of this best of two. So you've lost your chance at a 2 0 sweep if you're Infamous. Get a 1 1 draw, get some sort of points on the board moving. Uh, into that.